Hello and welcome to the program. This week we'll catch you up on all your favorite fall sports, talk with one senior swimmer, and we'll also take a look at the OWL playoff picture. I'm Peter Dubois and this is Inside OWL Athletics. The fall sports season is winding down, but the Owls men's soccer team is not slowing down a bit. The team knocked off Massachusetts College of the Liberal Arts 1-0 Wednesday night for their 12th win of the season. Men's soccer has not racked up a dozen wins since 2014. LJ Luster got the lone goal of the night. Gavin Fitzpatrick made five saves to earn the shutout, the Owls' eighth of the season. Volleyball also added to the win column Wednesday night with a sweep of Emmanuel College on the road. Neve Dodd had eight kills. Megan Palmer had nine digs, three kills, and an assist. Riley Bunker also had nine digs. Bailey Wilson rounded out the leaders of the night with 21 assists, five digs, two aces, and two kills. The win puts the Owls at 20-8 and eight for the season. The Keene State field hockey team played at Smith College Wednesday night in a non-conference game, looking to gain momentum before the playoffs. The Smith College Pioneers got off to a strong start in just the third minute, with a goal from Neva Richardson, her first of the season. After battling for some time, the Pioneers scored again near the end of the first half, thanks to Maura McGowan. At the start of the second half, the Owls looked to be back in it, with Ali McCall finding the back of the net for Keene's first goal of the night, making it 2-1. But the Pioneers wouldn't be stopped, as Abby Morton stopped five, scored five minutes later, giving Smith the lead by two once again. Reagan Stokes put the game away for the Pioneers later on, becoming the fourth different Smith player to score in the game. The Pioneers win 4-1 as the Owls now prepare for their big match against Castleton to finish the regular season. Field hockey forwards Nina Bruno and Kayla Klein are both having seasons to remember. This week I talked to the sensational sophomores to get their outlooks on the season. Sophomores Kayla Klein and Nina Bruno currently lead the conference in goals. Both players have scored over 20 goals this season, an achievement that head coach Amy Watson hasn't seen in nearly 30 years of coaching. Even 20 for one player is high, um, but you know, I've had that before, but I've never had two in the same season that have, you know, kind of been chasing each other. Klein scored just two goals her freshman season. This year, her current season total stands at an impressive 23 goals. It's unreal. Uh, last year, I didn't start, I didn't really play that much, so to become, like, come in this year, like, really ready um, to be available for my team is huge, and it feels good, and I'm getting the goals not only from me, but for my entire team, so it's good. Bruno says she has surpassed her own personal goals this season as well. I just said to myself, I want to hit 100 points, and I want to just get more goals and more assists than I did last year, just like a personal goal for myself. And I did surpass that, so it's a great feeling, and I want to keep working hard so each year I can get better and better. Klein and Bruno are not only teammates, they're also best friends. Me and Kayla are so close. Um, not only do we live together, but just on and off the field, we have such great chemistry. Um, love spending time with her. The teammates are each proud of their individual accomplishments, but even more so for each other. To be able to like reach that with my best friend is um, a really cool experience. She had an unbelievable season this year and she's having an unbelievable season again. Making more history, so I'm proud of her. I'm proud that I'm to be able to do this with her. It means a lot. It makes it way more memorable to have it, have something like an accomplishment like that be shared with a best friend. Nina and Kayla are proving to be young leaders on this team. The dynamic duo says they drive each other to be better. Me and Nina both have two seasons left, so to be able to go through this with her, her being my best friend, her being my teammate, her being like always around me, we push each other to motivate each other, we're always there for each other, so it's huge. The more they play together, the more they complement each other, so it's, it's really encouraging to know they're only sophomores and they have two more years of this. Keene State's field hockey team is tied for first place in the LEC at this time. As a whole, the team is feeling confident going into playoffs. I think we're working hard at practices. I think everyone's putting forth great effort. Yeah, I think we just need to keep working hard and it'll go good. The conference is, is really tough this year and um, it could go any way. So we're kind of looking forward to a really competitive next two weeks. Field hockey is one of three fall teams with a spot in the conference tournament. Tyler DeRosa is in the studio with more on the Owls playoff picture. Tyler? Thanks, Pete. None of the Owls teams are going into the tournament seated lower than four. 
Topping the list is the breakout team of this season, men's soccer. The Owls men's soccer team has dominated the LEC this season, going 6-1. and one. Keene State will clinch the top seed in the LEC tournament with a win over the Beacons in their final game of the season. Field hockey has also steamrolled through the conference, sitting at 10-1, and one, tied with Castleton. Saturday's head-to-head matchup will determine the two top seeds in the tournament. The Owls will need the strong offense they've had all year from Nina Bruno and Kayla Klein for sure this weekend. Volleyball is sitting in third place in the LEC with one conference game left. A Keen State win at Rhode Island College Saturday will clinch at least the number three seed for the Owls. And if Eastern Connecticut also loses to Southern Maine on Saturday, KSC will be the number two seed. A loss puts the Owls in a three-way tie for third place with Western Connecticut State and Rhode Island College, which would give KSC either the number three or number four seed. The corner final rounds start on Tuesday. Brackets and game locations will be announced Saturday evening. To keep up with conference tournament information, check out keenowls.com. Again, that's keenowls.com. For Inside Owl Athletics, I'm Tyler DeRosa. Three Owl athletes are picking up conference honors this week. Soccer sophomore Isaiah Lovering is the Defensive Player of the Week. He led the Owls to a 1-1 in -one week, scoring the lone goal in the loss and playing strong defense in a 3-0 shutout over LaSalle. Senior Katie Brandeberry is the LEC Swimmer of the Week. She placed first last week in the 200 freestyle and the 200 IM, along with swimming the anchor leg of the winning 200 free relay. Freshman teammate Brianna Feldman is the Rookie of the Week. She received second on both rounds of diving at St. Michael's. Abby Tarinka and Riley Bunker are your Owl Athletes of the Week. Tarinka allowed just one goal in two games for the soccer team this week. That included four saves in the last 10 seconds against Bridgewater State to preserve a tie score. Volleyball senior Riley Bunker had a record-breaking week. She registered her 1,884th dig to surpass Sarah Peterson as the all-time leader in digs for the Owls. Congratulations to all of our players of the week. Katie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on being LEC Swimmer of the Week again. Thank you. So how does it feel to be recognized by the conference two weeks in a row? It feels really good putting in the hard work and then being recognized for it. We've only been swimming two months now, so it really feels like the hard work does pay off. And does the training uh, change between freestyle and IM versus, you know, a different stroke? Um, it Mostly the distances stay the same, but it just you know, varies on stroke. You want to focus more on your weak strokes to really um, get better in the IM. And then it depends on the day of the week, too, with our different focuses. Right. You have eight new freshmen. How are they acclimating to a collegiate lifestyle, a collegiate swim team? Um, they're definitely getting used to it now. I think maybe the first couple weeks were, you know, a little rough. Not a lot of them were used to the practice schedule that we have. We practice, like, twice a day for, like, the full week. So... It definitely takes a lot to get used to. Right. And the women's team has actually won the last 12 LEC championships. How do you want to leave your mark or your legacy on the swim team before you graduate? You know, I want to leave with, you know, our 13th win. Like, I think we have a good shot at it. Um, but, you know, I really want to, you know, win, have a great team of girls. And have you set any personal uh goal for yourself this season? Um, I set goals for times. Um, I used to swim in high school, so my times were really good back then, and I'm just trying to get back to where I was then. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The Owls will be on the road on October 27th against Roger Williams with a 1 p.m. start time. It's the final weekend of the regular season fall sports for the Owls. There is plenty of action this weekend and three teams are competing this weekend in Rhode Island. On Friday night, women's soccer hosts UMass Boston at 6. Men's soccer is on the road at UMass Boston at 7.30. Saturday, volleyball travels to Rhode Island College for a noon match. Swimming and diving will also be in the Ocean State for a duel with Roger Williams at 1. Field hockey closes out the regular season at home against Castleton at noon. And finally, cross country is off to the LEC Conference Championships. They'll be in Providence, Rhode Island, Racing begins at 2 p.m. Because of the weather this weekend, some of these game days and times may change. Check out KeenOwls.com for the latest schedule updates. Remember, you can watch all Keen State home contests through the Owls Athletic website. Just go to KeenOwls.com, click on the Game Day tab, and then select Live Broadcasts. Again, that's KeenOwls.com, 
game day, and then live broadcasts. That's all the OWL action for this week. I'm Peter Dubois, and for all of us at Inside OWL Athletics, thank you for watching.